Um, yeah, I was speaking to someone about ego and how useful, how useful is the ego, how much of a friend is your ego. Um, one of the things I'm quite passionate about is The Course in Miracles, uh, uh, amongst other things, and the various teachers of enlightenment. But um, uh, in some respects, yeah, you know, well, put it this way, um, there's, there's levels, uh, most people know my story, uh, I was an addict, food addiction, workalism, all kinds of addictions, working in the stock market. And uh, when you're in addiction, you basically, you always repress your feelings. You never get to feel out your feelings. So I was eating non-stop, I was working non-stop, I had all of these addictions to numb out and distract. And that led to kidney failure and a spiritual experience in the hospital bed, uh, which started my spiritual journey. So at that point, I had like a massive, what we would call, I think most people would agree, a massive ego. A very egotistical, uh, I thought a lot of, you know, I, I thought I was amazing and horrific at the same time. You know, like I'm, I'm, in, I'm incredible, yet I'm also very, very disgusting and hope people don't recognize, you know, if I can put on a good show on the outside, you won't notice that I feel horrific on the inside. Um, so there was that, all those addictions. So the, what, how I define the ego is the, the amount of belief systems, uh, thoughts, that are within the ego, and also very, very important, you know, I was talking about addiction, the level of repressed or suppressed feelings, which also make up another huge component of the ego. So the amount of beliefs, and that the beliefs will be uh, intertwined with the amount of control that is required in the world to feel safe and to operate, and also the amount of repressed feelings. Those two things, if you've got too many of those beliefs, uh, that you need to be in control, or you need to get a fix from the world, or, or you need to get approval, or whatever, all those beliefs, or, or I need my ego to function, the more, it's like the more fear, and the more control I do, the more safer and better I'll be in the world. And then you get all these, so I would say that my ego is that big, on the scale of how things, that's why I was facing death, because you're cut off from the life, you know, so, I was actually, you know, I was very productive, you know, I was working in the stock market, I was, you know, I had, uh, so I had, a, I had a degree, I had an MBA, I was studying for a chartered financial analyst, you know, I had like lots and lots of, so there was lots of intelligence there, there was a lot of productive work, but actually having all that productive work, all those repressed feelings, does that lead to survival? Actually, for me, the ego, actually, the more inflated your ego is, the closer you are to death. That's the funny thing. Because you think, like, oh, if I'm more intelligent and, uh, and I'm more productive, uh, if those things are going on, then I'll survive better. And I can control things better. And, and the fear is useful. The more fearful I am, the more vigilant I'll be. So, f so the ego says, the more fear you've got, the more control you've got, uh, uh, the, the, the greater is your chance of survival and being having a happy life. Now, uh, you know, my experience, and I think the experience of most spiritual people, is that's the opposite. You know, you're getting closer to death the more inflated your ego is, the more active it is, the more it needs to control. You're actually going down the bottom of the scale, you get more repressed feelings. You know, from Chinese medicine, and if you use kinesiology and muscle testing, uh, we have got someone here. So you, you, you blow out all your meridians and your energy lines. So you're full of fear and anger, you're like your energy lines all shut off. You know, I had, um, I got kidney failure. It was quite funny, I got kidney failure, started on my spiritual journey, and I met an acupuncturist who's probably psychic as well. So he, you know, so he gave me this uh, acupuncturist, and he whispered in my ear, you know, that, hey, you know, kidneys are your fear meridian, mm -hmm. your fear meridian. He just said that. It was like God was telling me, you know, like, You've been, in, you've been in fear and control and addiction, now you're dead, now get back to God. Which is, how do you get back to God, spirituality, love, whatever you want to call it? You know, then you have to let go of your ego. So actually, what you find, and the Course in Miracles is like, the source of my security is, is in God. It's not in how big my ego is, how great at control, or, you know, you're actually getting closer to death. So that's very, very, um, not that I'm an anti-ego person, but, 
the more you let go of your ego, the more you attune with life and the more you attune with who you're meant to be. And the more you go into ego, you're tuning in to who you're not meant to be, you see. You end up being the thing that you didn't want to be. Um, so, and, and Dr. Hawkins did a lot of work, you know, when you're, um, and well, the Titan of the Course in Miracles, but this is just a general thing, uh, it's just a general introduction to the ego. When you're, because um, the Course in Miracles is like removing the blocks to love. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is removing the blocks to love. And what stands in, what is the, ba you know, in, in the simplistic course language, um, you know, the, uh, the ego is that which creates, you know, it, it is based on fear and the need to be in control. You know, and that creates this thing called separation. Or, you know, you could say, like, people with an ego, the bigger your ego is, the more you'll have what's called separation anxiety, mm. you see. Because everyone wants to feel love and safe and happy in, in the moment. But actually, the bigger your ego gets, the more you'll have this feeling of unease. Mm. The more you'll have this feeling of, like, I don't feel accepted, loved, safe in this moment and the ego will be putting up lots of solutions or from fear or from control like if I had more money then I'd feel safe mm -hmm. if I had a partner then I'd feel safe yeah. if uh, if more people liked me then I'd feel safe or I need to get more exciting and so that people think I'm more of a I can entertain people then I'll feel safe. And the ego tells the e you that you need to be special in order to mm. be loved. Ah, you use the, la you use the word, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to be it's special. Conditional love. Special special. You need to be special yeah. and different, that's right, yes. So the ego talks about the need to be special, mm -hmm. you know. So the ego needs to be special, which will take you more towards fear and separation. Yeah. So the whole course is about how do we let go of specialness in ourselves and others and perceiving it the need to be special, like the need for me to be special or the need for me to find special people as mm -hmm. well yeah. uh, or have special careers mm -hmm. or need to be especially, especially more interesting than everyone, mm -hmm. not bland or anything. Counted, better things. Be be doing doing better things, way. yes, yeah. that, that, absolutely. So, and, uh, and so, so you've got, the more bigger your ego is, the more you're going to feel fear and separation, the need to control, the need to think, to be in the future or the past, or to find something to get relief from the separation. Like addiction is, I need to get something to relieve my feeling of fear and separation. Like I need to eat right now, I need to find some donuts, or I need to uh, go into workerism right now, or something. So, and as you start to do spiritual work, like A Course in Miracles, or follow an enlightened teacher, or whatever it is, then you start to go up your vibration starts to shift and you start to feel safer, um, you start to feel more happy in the present moment, you start to also, you, you find that your, that which keeps you safe in the universe is your spiritual connection. Because, you know, of course in miracles, and it's my own experience, is that the higher, the more you let go of your ego, the more miracles and synchronicities uh, happen and you start to tune in to your higher self, who you're meant to be your vocation, the people you're supposed to hang out with, all of that, you know, as you go from the lower vibrations, like people who go into 12-step groups, you know, they'll have their drinking and drugging buddies. But as they go up in their vibration, they may no longer be hanging out with their drink and drug buddies, but they get new spiritual buddies, you see. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, like I was working in the stock market, you know, that was kind of, for me, that was kind of an ego thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then now, you know, I'm more interested in, in doing things which are much more I feel much more in alignment with my spirit, mm -hmm. you know, than in alignment with basically a, a huge fear and feeling not enough and wanting to get a career mm -hmm. to make me feel okay and safe in life. Because that was my program. So, in the world, we're collectively programmed by the collective ego. You know, that, that the, more, the more you've got these ego symbol, special symbolistic things, you know, money, a thin mm -hmm. body, a success, whatever, then the more safe and the more love you get. But actually, love is not from the outside. Like, of course, ha hammers it on. You're not going to find it outside yourself. You've got to find it on the inside. You see, you can't make people, places and situations your God, because it's not going to. So, so actually, the more you let go, the, uh, the more it is. And this was something I was talking on, a, on another video about 
um, spiritual routine, you see, because actually you have to sort of break down when you're doing spiritual work, because your ego is pre-programmed with safety and love comes from acquisition of externals, you know. So, like when you wake up in the morning in fear uh, and stress separation anxiety, your ego will go, well, I need to eat, or I need to do some work, or I need to, you know, find a video on YouTube, a self-help video, or whatever it is. But it doesn't want to, like, do something that will spiritually connect you with the source within. But it's the source within which orchestrates your day. Because when you get to the higher vibrations, you feel peace and love and presence, you know. And, and not only that, you're in alignment with their, with their spiritual field, which will guide you through the day without your need for thinking or to be in control. And everything will just align. The right people will come, you'll be doing and saying the right things. I mean, someone said channeling, or I like St. Francis, uh, you know, he says, you'll be an instrument for the divine, you know, to be a, a vessel for the divine, because your head's not in the way, you know, trying to orchestrate yeah. the whole thing. Everything intuitively, spontaneously comes out of grace, not out of your ego, you see. And um, like with Hawkins' work, you can calibrate certain things, like, the, you know, uh, it was mentioned in the group today, creativity. Creativity was mentioned, you know, actually, in your ego, your ego can, you know, when you're in addiction, you can do some pretty amazing things, even though it kills you in the end. Mm -hmm. But actually, um, but you're, you're really connected to your heart and your source when you're, uh, and, you know, you have spiritual genius. Like, there's lots of, there's been great uh, artists, you know, I, I, and some of them were calibrate, calibrating very high. I think it was, is it Van Gogh? Van Gogh? I'm sure Michelangelo mm. is, is pretty up there. So, um, and then you've got all, all, the, all the spiritual teachers as well. He was sick. So that's the, the true thing of, of inspiration. And the one thing is like, because it took me to death, is that when you're spiritually connected, and we were talking about the meridians, you see, you can be, you can be creative non-stop. And you're not going to blow out and burn out. Because in ego, you're going to burn out or die, or, or something horrible is going to happen. So that's like f for good. Um, but there are certain fears you have to transcend. Each time you go up to a higher level of trust, usually there is a, f a gate of what I call fear or testing, you know, that you have to release. You know, like sometimes um, what can come up, if I let go further, if I let go and trust the universe and go deeper into peace and presence and love, then I'll become boring and bland and I'll have to wear a brown robe mm -hmm. and sit in my room for the rest of my life. So don't let go any further because um, yeah. that's going to happen. So these great fears come, you know, and they're very, very common. I'll turn into a vegetable and I'll never move from my bed, you know, or I'll have no, you know, or another common one is I'll run out of money. Mm -hmm. I'll, just, I'll just sit down and I'll be a vegetable. So all, all these are very, very common fears. And, you know, it's not for me to say, but in my experience, the more you let go, the more the miraculous is invited in. But you are, the ego fights tooth and nail every inch of the way for losing its dominion. You know, so it says, well, don't let go anymore because you become boring, or don't let go anymore because you won't be able to pay the rent. Or don't go, go anymore because you'll be so boring that you'll have no friends and you'll be friendless for the rest of your life. Or you won't be able to make a joke. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, uh, and someone mentioned special, you know, being special, you won't be special any longer. People won't recognize you as being special. So all of those things uh, are, are released. So that's the thing with the ego. So actually, I, I know that actually I want to let go more and more of my ego up until enlightenment because uh, I had such stunning, um, but that's a slightly different thing. If, if you ever have like a near-death spiritual experience or mystical experiences with a teacher of enlightenment, um, you'll know something that's stated in The Course in Miracles. And The Course in Miracles, I had a white light spiritual experience with a teacher of enlightenment uh, when I had a one-to-one -one session with him, a guy called Muji. And um, it says in The Course, that if you were to ever experience what it was like to be with God, that imagine the happiest feeling you've ever experienced in this life, and times it by a hundred and a thousand again, and you wouldn't be close. 
to what it's like to be connected to God. And, uh, and that's what it's like. If you've ever had a, an amazing spiritual experience to be connected to your source, there is, there is no donut, there is no girlfriend, there is no career, there is no person's approval that can match that. Can match that. And it's like, as you dissolve your ego, and you become in alignment with the universe, as you go up, the universe, in my experience, always takes care of you in a far better way. But it may mean there's huge things you'd have to let go of. You may lose your drinking buddies, you may lose your career, you may lose things. So there, it can be scary. Yeah. But it's always like my experience is, if you go through the fear, you'll be given something far better on the other side. Mm. But it's like, no, I have to keep this job. No, I have to keep this relationship. No, I'll lose my personality and people will think I'm boring. So there's, these are what I call the gateways of fear. And, uh, but my experience is each time you, you surrender, it's like little ego mini-deaths on the way up. Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. I think one of the things my ego tells me is that you know, I'm turning away from the world. But for example, to choose, and then of course I know talks about sort of special love relationships yes. and, and mm -hmm. how they're sort of a, um, a poor substitute really for the love that we find within ourselves yes. when we're connected to mm -hmm. God. Um, and for me, I, I don't know, there's like a sadness that comes up for me there that it's kind of giving up on the world or giving up, like I'm turning away from the world. Because I, I guess I'm coming from a place where I haven't had an unhappy life. Yes. You know, I don't have that kind of story. Yes. So um, I have, like feel there's a lot of meaningful connection and love to be found in the world of form or you yes. know, in this illusion, if you want to call it that. So there's, yeah, that's what my ego says to me, um, that, you know, to choose to choose a kind of, um, to, to always look inwards for love, I guess. It's, it's, there's a sadness there to kind of, it's a turning away from, you know, relationships with people in, in the world. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, no, and thank you for, for sharing that. I think that is a great, uh, it's a great, a great, a great fear. And it's a very, uh, very real thing that people are worried. You know, mm -hmm. there's this, <clears throat> this wonderful thing, like you meet someone, and you feel you have a special connection with them or something, and then you're trying to, you're, you know, the course would make, would try, would ask you to make it meaningless. Yes, I the know. The course would ask you to make it meaningless. <laughs> you know, I have such a special bond with you. And then if I had to do my course lesson today, okay. you're as meaningless as this mug of tea, yeah. which is just as meaningless as this thing. You know, and the ego's going like, I'm going to make this special magical interaction I have like meaningless. So it's like, well, surely, you know, I won't have any connection in the world, or what's the point of living if I can't have these, but, or, you know, I'll become a monk in my living room or something, I'll never leave the house. So, <coughs> so I'm going to keep talking. That's a and, and, uh, <laughs> hello? Come on up. 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 The more your ego is not interacting and making things special, you know, the more there is connection. Because the ego is the block to the now. I can relate to that. The ego is the block to the now, yeah. actually. And so, one of the things like one of my teachers, Dr. Hawkins, said is like, every moment is complete and whole and amazing. It would be like, he'll, uh, and this is like a teacher on enlightenment, he'll be eating his sandwich and be, he'll be in the present moment and he'll be absolutely fabulous and he'll be in the now. And then the phone will ring, you pick up the phone, and you mm. completely forget that he was eating a sandwich because they, it, it's like it's totally in the now with the, with the conversation. And he will have no memory of that. And it's just absolutely sublime. So you've actually taken away all those little subconscious things like, oh, I'm having a great time because it's a special relationship. Mm. It gets even better. But it's like you're losing the specialness because every moment is perfect. You see, but the ego wants to make it. I, I can only feel magic if my favourite friend is here and I'm eating a donut, 
And that's when I can yeah. feel alive and connected. But actually, if you take all that crap away, mm. you're going to feel alive and connected every time. But of course, some people, I mean, you know, you're, you're giving up a lot of ego illusions. Like some people want you to say that I'm your best friend, I'm the special person. But no, every moment in the eternal now, I call it the eternal now, is just as good as it's going to get with intimacy and connection and love and joy. So it's, it's okay to let go of this idea of specialness. It's so, it's, sorry. It's so, it's just, I to say, it's so interesting you're talking about the kidneys and yes. you're talking about artists and you're talking about drugs. Because the kidneys are the, the, the organ related to fear in Chinese yes. medicine. Yes. And, uh, and, and now, now going through some things to help. Health-wise, like it says, you know, we straighten up and spiritually start straightening up and physically and mentally too. And one of the things that are, is required is for the kidneys to start filtering, and they're not. And it's interesting, as I go along the steps, and I was like, it, I start seeing those things, the, the kidneys starting filtering, yeah. having, and having kidney pain on the left side. Yes. And it's funny because everything that I have, it's almost always in the left side. Yes. And it's interesting you're saying about the artists, as in being addicted to drugs like I've been, yes. it just, s certain drugs, they, they open they open up that door yes. and you get into the room with Christ and Buddha, but you cannot stay there. Yes. And that's why it kept me going back to it. Yes. And it's so interesting that looking at, at, looking at those artists that died at 27, yes. uh, and it's funny, I was looking at it and it, it's the same and according to Chinese medicine and other things, it's at that age where you either die or you grow up. Yes. You, you know, either you die or you evolve. Yes. And I always had that thing I was going to die at 27. And I actually started recovery at 27 and what had to die and start start dying, I reckon, it was the evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sorry, I just saw that. No, please, yeah, please do. So, this stuff. <laughs>